Throughout history, there have been many executions that have been botched or have gone very wrong. But there was one executioner in London who was known for making a bloody mess of the job of taking a life of a condemned criminal. Jack Ketch's name carried the reputation of being a brutal axeman who was known for performing executions poorly. It was one of his most high-profile killings that went horrifically wrong, and on Tower Hill, his actions were so bad that he almost incited a riot, with the crowd watching the Duke of Monmouth's execution getting so angry that they wanted to put Jack Ketch on the block next. Join us today as we look at the most botched execution in English history, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. James Scott was the son of Charles II and Lucy Walter, and was born on the 9th of April 1649. Charles, the Prince of Wales, was just 18 at the time, and Lucy was his first mistress. James was born in the Netherlands, and as he was deemed illegitimate, he was unable to succeed to the English and Scottish throne, unless he could prove that his parents had married, and he did later claim that this was the case, but his father, the King, later claimed that he had only married his Queen Catherine. But the young James was kidnapped by the King's men, and was then sent to Paris, but on the 14th of February 1663, he was taken to England, and was named the Duke of Monmouth, along with the Earl of Doncaster, and Baron Scott of Tyndale. He then in the months after became a Knight of the Garter, and shortly after he turned 14, he had married Anne Scott. James took his wife's surname, and he was considered a popular young Protestant man. But he then became locked in a fierce and bloody rivalry, with his uncle the Duke of York, James. Both of the two wanted to become the heir of Charles II. The Duke of York was a strong and open Catholic, and this was seen as a problem. But age 16, James Scott was part of the English fleet with his uncle during the Second Anglo-Dutch War, and then he came back and returned to become a captain of a cavalry unit. The Duke of Monmouth continued to rise throughout the army ranks, and he commanded 6,000 soldiers during the Third Anglo-Dutch War, and he was named the Lord Lieutenant of the East Riding of Yorkshire, and also the Governor of Kingston-upon-Hull. He was seen as a fantastic commander and soldier, and he had more prestigious roles placed on him, such as being the Master of the Horse, and also the Chancellor of Cambridge University. King Charles II said that all military orders should be directed towards his illegitimate son first, and the Duke of Monmouth should check these. James Scott with this order became the most important man in the armed forces, and he continued to act as a commander fighting in the Anglo-Dutch wars against the French. He was a very skilled and feared soldier, and when he came home he was placed in charge of stamping out the Scottish Covenanter Rebellion, which he did. For all of his work in the army, James Scott, the Duke of Monmouth, was well liked and well respected, and he was very popular in England. After the Rye House Plot of 1683, which then attempted to kill Charles and James, he went into exile in the Netherlands, and gathered supporters in the Netherlands for a rebellion. A rebellion was planned to work alongside others in Scotland and England, and this was aimed at inspiring anger towards the monarchy. It was given the title Monmouth's Rebellion, as James Scott led the rebellion against the target of the new king, his uncle James II. After Charles II died, his brother was coronated on the 23rd of April 1685, and he was openly Catholic. Many across the country were worried for their Protestant beliefs, and as Monmouth was Protestant, they believed he would be a better king. Some saw him as the rightful heir to Charles II's throne, and Monmouth wanted to become king, and believed that he would be able to do it. A rebellion rose up, and Monmouth funded it by selling much of his possessions to create weapons and ships. He set sail for England on the 30th of May 1685, and was backed up by three small ships, field guns, 1500 muskets, and then he landed on the shores of Dorset, and gathered 300 men at Lyme Regis, who backed Monmouth. James II the King had received news of the plot and invasion, and volunteers arrived to support Monmouth's rebellion, and his army grew and grew. They did meet royalist soldiers at Bridport, and decided then to go north to Somerset, rather than straight to London. More people joined his forces, which numbered around 6,000. He declared himself the rightful king, and the result of this was the Battle of Sedgemoor. Monmouth and the King's armies met, but Monmouth ultimately lost as his poorly organised soldiers were no match for the Royalist army. He then fled, but eventually was captured in a ditch hiding. But then quickly, Parliament passed an act of attainder sentencing the Duke of Monmouth to death as a traitor with no trial. It was said that James, the Duke of Monmouth, has in a hostile manner invaded the kingdom, and the said Duke of Monmouth 
be convicted and attainted of high treason, and that he suffered pain of death. He was then held at the Tower of London before his execution, and he claimed he was ready for this. On the morning of his execution, he dressed in a clean stockings, a fresh skirt, and lace scarf, as well as a grey suit, and a long periwig. His wife visited him along with their children, and they bid their father farewell. James Scott was taken on a short walk out of the tower's walls, towards Tower Hill and the scaffold that would take his life, which was where Thomas Cromwell and many other high-ranking members of the government had met their ends in the previous years. The scaffold had been prepared and was draped in mourning cloth, surrounded also by members of the King's Guard. Monmouth was led up to the scaffold where the crowd was huge, and he was confronted by his executioner, Jack Ketch. Ketch is considered the worst executioner in history. Whilst on the scaffold, Monmouth told Ketch to do your work well, and Ketch took offence from this, it's believed. He then also said, Here are six guineas for you. Pray you do your business well. Do not serve me as you did my Lord Russell. I have heard you struck him three or four times. If you give me two strokes, I promise I will not stir. By referencing Ketch's former botches, it's believed Monmouth angered Ketch, or affected his concentration. But Monmouth then took off his periwig and coat, and he refused to wear a blindfold whilst he was knelt on the block. Following this, he asked to touch Ketch's axe, and when he did this, he believed it was not sharp enough to take his head clean from his body in one swift blow. Following this, Monmouth was then reassured by Ketch, and the executioner made his final preparations. Monmouth put his head on the block, and then Ketch first swung the axe down onto Monmouth's neck, but he missed and caught the side of his neck, and Scott turned around to look in shock. The second swing Ketch made took a bigger chunk out of Monmouth's neck, but then the third swing missed completely. Ketch then allegedly screamed, God damn me, I can do no more. My heart failed me, I cannot do it. Following this, the crowd turned against the executioner and screamed at him, and they threatened to kill Ketch if he could not do better. He then picked the axe up again, after he had allegedly given up, and it took him around three more blows from the axe to kill Monmouth, but after six or seven brutal and bloody swings, his head was still attached to his body. Following this, Ketch then pulled out a butcher's knife and cut through the final sinews, before Monmouth's head fell onto the floor, and as he held it up to the crowd, boos were echoing around Tower Hill. The crowd rushed forward and tried to seize Ketch, before he was escorted away by guards from the crowd who wanted his death. James Scott's body was taken back into the Tower of London to be buried inside the chapel of St Peter ad Vincula. It was claimed that as his portrait had never been painted, his head was allegedly then sewn back on after his execution, and this was done after his body was exhumed. His portrait was then supposedly painted. But James Scott, the Duke of Monmouth's execution, was brutal and savage, and was one of the most botched executions in history. Jack Ketch became known for being a tragic and terrible executioner, and it's for Monmouth's death that he is remembered in this way. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.